Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. This week, we've got uh, Phil Thomas on the podcast talking about balancing ATPL studies part-time with work. Welcome, Phil. Thank you, Simon. It's nice to be here. So you passed your PPL with us late 2021 in Hotel Foxtrot, and you did your IRR afterwards. So what, what have you been up to since? I've been trying to do some hours, actually. So I've been flying Hotel Foxtrot a little bit. Um, I've also managed to buy a share of a plane into Western. Yeah, and that's the PA twenty eight as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's exactly the same as Hotel Fox. It's yeah. got the uh, roof trim. Yeah, the same uh, roof. exactly <laughs> the same, just a different colour. Yeah. So I've been flying that a little bit, um, and then I decided to have a crack at the ATPL exams. Okay. Um, I didn't actually ever expect to pass, if oh, I'm okay. honest. <laughs> uh, I just thought I'd, I'd, I always wanted to have a go. Yeah. So I thought it's now or never. Yeah, if you don't sure. try, you know, if you don't take the shot, you're never going to score. And what, what um, was the um, the goal? What was your purpose for doing that? I think I, I've always had kind of one eye on commercial, but not that seriously. Okay. It's one of these things I always think maybe it's a bit of a pipe dream, but it'd be really nice to do. Yeah. But I can't commit to giving up the job yeah. and, you know, going full time and doing integrated. So I thought if I can just do this and pay as you go for it yeah. through work, it'll take a little bit longer and also, I'm not committing everything to it. You know, you 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 can basically do right. I can just keep doing pay as you go and see where it goes. If it doesn't go anywhere, you still haven't lost anything. Yeah, absolutely. But you've got some options later on. It's it's about having options, I think. And yeah. speaking to everyone, everyone says the exams are the hardest thing to do. Yeah. By a country mile, it's so much kind of commitment. Right, to be honest, excuse my language, I think they're a bit of a shit filter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, literally, if you can't get through that bit, you've got no chance. It so does much. feel like it's a test for only the most dedicated, stubborn and worthy yes. mate shall pass the gates of of the yeah. ATPL. Yeah. Um, some of the questions in the exams, you know, you, you, I'm surprised the iPad hasn't been launched across the room quite a few times. <laughs> you're just like, you cannot ask that. That's ridiculous, but that's the answer. Yeah. And that's what you've got to say. So what, what's the next step for you? The ATPLs were quite difficult and I never expected to pass. So I actually did the modular. So I only yeah. paid for module one which kind of okay. shows how confident I was in actually completing this thing. Oh, so oh, I see. So you went into it with the mindset that you might just I d- test it out sort of thing. I, I didn't know if I'd have the time or right, the commitment okay. at work or whether I had the staying power or I'd do some, I'd fail a couple, I'd get yep. demoralised. So I literally only paid for module one, which was the first four exams, mm-hmm. with a view to, I'll see if I've got the time, we'll do, and if I haven't, I haven't lost that much money. But I actually passed them, which I surprised myself. So then thought, I, I best do module two. Again, put a lot of time into it, passed that. And then module three was a bit touch and go because you start getting exam fatigue at this point. Yeah. Um, and I've passed that. So I'd never thought I'd be in the position to actually find myself having passed the ATPL exam. So it may sound a bit strange. There isn't, I didn't really have like a plan at this point. I'm going to be here. Then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do that. It was always, I'll give it a shot. Didn't expect to be here. So you've kind of got further than you thought you would each time. <laughs> yeah. And it, it feels a bit like an excuse. I didn't have to make any plans because I never expected to pass. Yeah. Now I have, it feels like we've got to actually actively start doing some more things on it now. So yeah. I need to get some hours because mm-hmm. uh, I think you need 170, is it, for the multi-engine? Engine. So multi-engine, I think, is the next step. I'd like okay. to do that anyway. It looks like great fun. I kind of fancy doing it in like a Seneca or a Beach Baron with yeah. the older controls and you have like kind of the blue levers, mm. whereas modern schools are all DA42, it's all yeah. FADEC. Yeah, the, yeah. the computers do a lot. The multi-engine's next, so I've got to do 10 hours, because yeah. I'm on 160, yeah. then I'll probably do the multi-engine. Then the commercial, you have to do 200 hours. Yes. So yeah. it'll be a lot more flying to get to the commercial, and then we'll take it from there. So there are 13 subjects with your ATPLs and they're broken down into three modules. So we've got, for you, module one was human performance, general nav, meteorology and air law, and then module two, instrumentation, radio nav airframes, um, power plant, flight planning and performance, and then comms. That's right, yeah. Um, 
mod three, uh, principles of flight, mass and balance, and operational procedures. Can you tell us, obviously, because you've got these modules, can you tell us what the study regime looked like for you and how it was kind of broken down? Yes, yeah, so you, ha you have to be really dedicated to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's potentially why a lot of people fail. Yeah. Because it, the PPLs, the exams are obviously very cut down. Yeah. You still need to put a lot of work into PPL. Yeah. But it's not this. It's in a totally different league to the ATPLs. I mean, I wish yeah. I'd brought the books actually. So I've, I've seen some of them. Yeah. They're, they're so you have yeah. the PPL book looks like <laughs> yeah. an A five book. Yeah. The ATPL will be an A four book, and imagine yeah. it being like four times as thick. Yeah, yeah. And this is the sort of like up up knowledge you need, the upscaling knowledge. So, because uh, I learnt with Bristol Ground School, and the way they do it, they break into four modules, and you have to sit four exams at the same time for module one. Yeah. Um. So you have to, it's not like you can pick the exams of a PPL. I'm going to put everything into one exam, pass that, move on. These you've kind of got to revise for all four at the same time. My regime, uh, Bristol Ground School have got some great apps. So I bought an iPad, loaded the Bristol Ground School app. It also works on desktop as well. Mm -hmm. So when it's quiet at work, you can study at work. He's and like, I, I am working, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of have your screen on and yeah, people don't yeah, know yeah. what you're doing, yeah. so you just crack on with it. Um, and then I had the iPad and took the iPad around. You know, if, you, if, you, if, if you've got to travel for work, like mm. we were flying up to Scotland quite a lot. So you check into the airport two hours early, you get the iPad out. As long yeah. as you've took all your bits and bobs, you can get two hours revision done. It's actually quite amazing how much work you can do in kind of downtime. Yeah. But you have to be really, really structured as well, because I didn't want these to drag out. So I said, I'm going to do 12 weeks, weeks module one, 12 weeks module two, 12 weeks module three. Module three actually ended up taking eight, cause, yeah. just because of timings of revision weeks and exam schedules. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to give yourself time. So what I did, I actually booked the exams. So I was like, I have, I have, to, I have to know this stuff yeah. in 12 weeks, because I'm, I'm doing the exams, I've paid for the exams, and it, it puts the pressure on, but it's good. It means you will do the work. Well, I talk to people about business, about flying, all kinds of stuff. And a lot of people say, well, I haven't got time to do this. I haven't got time to do that. And I'm like, well, I guarantee you, you have. Right? It doesn't matter what excuse you've got. I've got kids, I've got this, I've got that. You can always find time. It's about priorities. You know, if you look at your phone, for example, and look at how many hours you spend scrolling on Instagram and Facebook each day, uh, not for business, right? then there's probably two or three hours there that you've got. So it's a choice, isn't it? What do, what do you choose? What do you prioritise? Oh, absolutely it is. So it's, it's scrolling on your phone, playing computer games on the console, yeah. watching telly, going on Microsoft Simulator, yeah. all these things that when you chop them out, you do have enough time. It's yeah. just that they're more fun. And you'd rather be doing yeah. them. And this is where you have to be very disciplined. And I think you've got to guard your time a bit as well. If people are, oh, you know, do you want to come out for one beer to the pub? You know damn well it's not going to be one beer. So just say no. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we've got, um, you made some notes here for me. So we've got uh, going through the material on uh, uh, books and pad pilot, then going through the question banks to check your process, uh, taking live notes as you go. So you're sort of writing stuff down and um, re remembering it that way. And you had uh, live classroom sessions one, one week per module? That's right. So with the ATPLs, as part of the course, it's, the ATPLs are different to the PPL. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more regulated and a lot more structured. So the CAA insists you do, I think it's something like 80 or 100 hours of live classroom tuition. Yeah. That's part of doing the course. You can't get around that. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. Previous to COVID, you had to go in and yeah. sit in the classroom since COVID, uh, the CAA have relaxed it now. So you can do um, uh, basically um, live uh, live sessions uh, over the internet. Yes. So you have to have your web camera on so they can mm -hmm. see you there. And at BGS, uh, Bristol Ground School, they made sure you, you weren't just sitting there looking out the window or doing something else because right. they would keep picking on people and <laughs> asking them, like what do you think? What do you think? Yeah. Okay, how does this work? Because it was meant to be a polishing session, not a... Right not a, a, a teaching session so you had yeah. to be on your toes i like that because it meant you couldn't just be watching telly you had to be present and correct on the course yeah and um, it's quite tough there because it's 8 30 to 4 30 so uh for a week so monday to wow. friday for each module so there's three weeks of this spread so out over the course or so yeah so it it, yeah. it just ticks over the, the minimum you need for the caa to, yeah. to do the exams and then you do the exams at the end of each module 
You can do them whenever you like. So what I did, I did four weeks going through the material, yeah. making extensive notes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just had a load of A5 pads. Once I'd done that, I'd then book the revision weekend, yeah. do the week. So I kind of kind of knew my stuff yes. enough. The revision weeks helped, and I'd give myself another four, five, six weeks and just hammer the question banks. Um, and that kind of helps share what, what you do understand, what you don't understand. Um, Bristol Grand School have their own question bank, which I found was actually not as close to what the exam questions are, but it was a lot more technical. Mm-hmm. So I found you, if you didn't know something, you would find out you didn't know in the Bristol Ground School question banks. The ATPLQs is the other one which I think everyone uses. That was a bit more. That was a lot more close to what the exam questions are. But the danger is you just learn parrot fashion the answers, yeah. and then you go to the exam and it's not very banky, and you've only seen ten percent of the questions. You don't know what you're talking about, and so there's a danger there that you can fall into of just regurgitating question banks and sometimes that's not actually very helpful so how many hours study do you think uh you did roughly per subject the thing they say it's about 200 because i think you have to do minimum 750 hours in total Mm. plus i think it was something like 100 hours live classroom tuition Mm -hmm. i probably did around that maybe more Mm. because i was some days you might squeeze an hour in some days you could do eight hours on it but mm-hmm. I, I think I probably did 300, maybe 350 hours a module, wow. um, self-study, as well as the, the live study. So it's a, lot, it's a lot of commitment to do. Absolutely. Well, they, they do say that most people, it pretty much wipes out a year to 18 months of their life, doesn't it? You know, if they're doing it part time. Well, I, I managed to get it done in seven and a bit months. Wow. <laughs> because I was, but I, that was because I just, I needed to get it done. And once you get in a role, you actually change the way that you, your lifestyle so then you, you come in and it's, it's, it's second nature to turn on the iPad rather than turn on the telly. It's second nature to sit there for four hours revising. And mm. once you get on a roll, you can, you can just keep it going. I mean, you do get fatigued with it big yes. time. But I think if you can get on a roll, it's better just to keep going. I think if you try and break it up, it will make it harder than just yeah. going for it. So I think also with anything, if you start seeing the progress and you can see that, oh, I've only got three subjects left to do or whatever, it's like, it's going to be over soon sort of thing, you know. There's, so. I think there's a big part of that because after module one, when I passed the first exams, which I didn't expect to pass, mm-hmm. you really think I'm on my way, you know, that I'm actually making some progress. I'm getting some traction on this. Maybe, you know, maybe this isn't impossible because yeah. when you start and you get the material, you're just like, there's no way. Like, <laughs> how do people do this? It looks impossible. And when you just get, you know, you've kind of chipped away at the first module, yeah. it really does give you a boost. And I think that does help. So the course is scheduled to run over 18 months? It depends. The full-time integrated guys, I think, take six to nine, depending. I think they do six. And then there's, you can do, they, they make time to do resits after if you need them. Okay. Um, but the time period for this is, after the first, you take your first exam, you've got 18 months to complete right. all 13. If you okay. haven't sat them all, in th- passed them all in 13 months, then it, the clock resets, it wipes out anything yeah. you've done, and you're back to zero. The other thing is you only get six sittings. Mm-hmm. So you only get, and each sitting you can take as many exams mm-hmm. as you want and a few, but the problem you'll find with the scheduling is I did it at Leading Edge Aviation, and their exam periods were only three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so to get four exams in, you have to end up doing two exams in one day to yeah. try and get four done. So it makes it quite difficult. And if you haven't passed within all six sittings, it clock resets and you're back to zero. So Are there, are there any other time penalties um, with the ATPL? I think so, yes, because obviously to pass the exams is only one part of it. So once you've passed the exams, I think you have to... Because there's two, I think there's two separate licenses. I think there's commercial license and yeah. the air transport pilot's license. Yeah. So for the ATPL, uh, which is the higher license, it allows you to fly the, the bigger planes over mm-hmm. 5,700 kilograms, I think yeah. it is, and more than nine seats. Mm-hmm. So within 36 months, you have to have passed your multi-engine, your commercial, and your full instrument rating as well. I mm-hmm. think there's 36 months to do that. Otherwise, you lose the ATPL privilege. You're still commercial, Oh, okay. But I think it just reverts back to that line. The CPL, so you're yeah. nine seats. So you can still fly for reward, high reward. Yeah. Um, but I think you were limited then to 5,700 5, kilograms nice. and nine seats. Okay. So what subjects did you find the uh, the hardest and why? I think with the ATPLs, it's the same as PPL in terms of there are easier subjects mm-hmm. and there were harder subjects. For example, one of the subjects we've got on ATPL is comms. 
mm-hmm. and literally you can spend two days and you can pass this because if you if you don't know the comms yeah <laughs> you, yeah, you know yeah, after yeah. you know you've been flying then you probably shouldn't be flying i think yeah, yeah. so that was one yeah. of the easier ones um then you have p- things like human performance which is quite interesting but again it's it's not a particularly difficult exam and you can see this because the way that Bristol Ground School prioritised the time they spend on the live sessions, comms was like, I think they spent an hour on it. Mm. Human performance is like a couple of hours. And then you get into the harder things. So general navigation is one of the toughest exams. Mm-hmm. So I know you, you do this in PPL, mm. but uh, this takes it to the next level. So you're looking about convergency mm. uh, and all this good stuff and, and how like NDB radio waves will bend and how you work out your bearing and it, mm-hmm. it gets very in depth you really need to know your maths mm-hmm. that's that's a key trigonometry there's lots of formulas you need to be uh, very familiar with and you also need to understand stuff like polystereographs uh, uh lambert projections mercata mm-hmm. and on all these different ways of drawing maps so yeah it gets very involved and it's very it's quite maths heavy yes. uh, and there's a lot of knowledge so you, you can't bank that one. No. You'll get found out. You have to know your <laughs> stuff. Similarly, principles of flight. There's, there's a very, very maths heavy, a lot of questions, a lot of equations, a lot of concepts you need to understand. And again, not very banky. Similar to performance. Again, maybe not so maths heavy, but you have to understand why X is Y uh, yeah. in terms of like the performance or your V speeds like V1, mm-hmm. uh, V2. Mm-hmm. And... Again, it's not very banky, so they're they're probably the three hardest ones where you can't hide behind question banks. You have to know your stuff. But what it sounds like you're alluding to that some of them maybe you can. <laughs> you you can absolutely. So uh, and this is the same as the PPL, air law, operational procedures. Yeah. This material is so dry. It's just you, reading regurgitation. You can't. <laughs> you you know you, you just, it's just a memory test, and I think the question banks just help you memorize stuff. Yeah. Um, Again, uh, there's no other way for it. Just hit the banks with those. Is, have you got any tips for anybody looking for an ATPL provider from the you know the experience you had while you were looking? I really rate Bristol Ground School. I'm not an advert for them at all. Uh, for and I can't speak for Integrated. I know my, I've had very limited experience leading into aviation. Obviously, I was doing the exams down. They got sport, uh, speaking to a lot of the guys down there, the, the cadets, and they all loved it. And it mm. seemed like a great setup. I think they potentially one of the more expensive ones, mm-hmm. but they'll do your um, get all the ATPL exams out of the way. Then they take you off to Spain, and you go and basically fly around in sunny Spain and get your PPL and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So integrated wise, they look quite good. Um, distance learning, I think there's only a couple anyway, mm-hmm. uh, and I I can speak highly of Bristol Ground School. I like the setup, mm-hmm. um, I like the app, I like the distance learning. Um, stuff they do there's loads of video webinars uh, loads of uh, learning resources all the instructors are very good as well i think most of them are ex uh, raf or navy pilots mm. uh, they were all very good so yeah i'd absolutely recommend bristol ground school i like the way they operate um i've heard a few people really rave about bristol so. it was funny actually when i was going down to legion edge to do the exams mm. all the external candidates i spoke to every single one to a man was bristol yeah. ground school yeah. didn't meet anybody from doing you know distance learning from anything else it was all Bristol Ground School so have you got any tips you can give somebody starting out on their ATPL journey uh, how best to revise for the exams I think everyone learns differently because I've been following the ATPL forums there's quite a few uh, on Facebook ATPL uh, Bristol Ground School have got one Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are like asking how how do you revise how do you do this and everyone, and you get like a thousand different answers. Yeah. Some people are, well, I do the revision week first, even though I don't really know what I'm doing, to get flavour of it. You know, some people are, oh, well, I, I, I do something else. I do that right at the end before the exams. Mm. I just found that going through the material and spend three or four weeks doing that, and I made loads of notes, mm-hmm. didn't refer to them back to them that much, but writing it down helps remember it. Because yes. it slows you down rather than flicking through the pages yeah. You re- you read that, you, you write it down, it slows you down and it makes you take it in mm-hmm. more. So my method was go through all the material, mm-hmm. um, depending on when the revision week falls. So sometimes you might have two or three weeks where you're just hitting the banks and then you can do the revision week. 
if it, it sometimes it felt like one of them. I think module <coughs> two, the revision week, was just before the exams. Yes. And you can't do the exams till you've done the revision week is, is something I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, so mine was kind of a little bit variable, but it was always going through the subject first, making, no- making notes, doing the question banks, revision week, more question banks, and then exams. So there's a couple of things um, we sort of noted down when we were having a chat prior to it. So the other, the other tips that we, we thought of was be fully committed, which we spoke about earlier. So it's if you're going to do it, do it. If you know if you're not, don't bother because you're it, not going to get through it. I I know I did say that, but I kind of didn't because I only bought module one because yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure how committed I was. So yeah, um, I think you, if anybody who's definite that they're, I mean, for you it was like kind of an experiment to start off with, isn't it? See how far you could get with it, uh, and now you've got further, and it's like, okay, what am I going to do now? So I think be fully committed. Leave time in your calendar to do it so block everything out and hold yourself accountable you know if it's not going right kick your own ass and get it done absolutely (laughs) because on some of the forums people are how do you get started i haven't got the motivation if you're asking those questions it's not for you you have to be and the only the only person who's going to pass it is you you have to be disciplined with your time yeah. As I said, I wasn't sure what happened. It, you know, sometimes we work away with work if it gets busy. Yeah. And I'm working in Glasgow and London and, and Liverpool and all these places. And I thought, I won't have time. But I just had a lucky run. We weren't that busy at work. Yeah. And actually, you get in the, the flow of it and it was good. But that's not to say that everyone can do that. And yeah. just for me, it kind of felt lucky. And I did manage to have the, the kind of self-discipline to do it, which I was quite surprised about. So, so can you tell us about the costs? Yes, I think, I'm uh, not sure if I noted me down. Um, yes, I think it was about module one of well, Bristol Grand School was about £2,000. I think it was 1900 and something. Um, but I bought uh, the books, uh, the study kit. Um, that also includes a year subscription to their, their digital um, revision course as well and the question banks and everything else. So module one was a lot more expensive because you're buying all the subscriptions and stuff to start with, which you need. Uh, I think module two was about seven hundred pounds, and module three was similar, mm-hmm. but that includes your revision week. Yeah. Um, and then I actually opted to get the book because I, mm-hmm. I I find it's easy to have a book and a table. Yeah, yeah. To go through the initial material, so I think the books were added like of that seven hundred pounds. I think it was like two hundred pound was the books. Mm-hmm. But you also have to take into account the exams because yeah. it's eighty two pounds an exam. And there's 13, so you're looking at £1,000 in exams. So That's all, if you pass the first time. And, yeah, and if you yeah. have any resets, it's £82, yeah. £82. And also there's other stuff. For example, I was lucky because I could go to Oxford, yeah. and it's an hour's drive, and so it's not too bad. Again, there's petrol money to consider, but I met a lot of guys like, who would come from up north, and there's nowhere really up north, no ex- uh, kind of like exam centres. So people have to come down, and if they were taking exams Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. it was three nights in a hotel. Wow. So there's all these things to think about as well as it's not just the kind of cover price on the website. Yeah, there's yeah, extra yeah. stuff. And you also have, there's always stuff that you need that you have to buy extra as well yeah. on top of that. I mean, I bought an iPad, so there's another, whatever, that was £500 on top. Do you, do you have an idea what you spent in total, roughly? Um, just on the ATPLs, I think it would have been uh, 2000 3200 4,200, including probably close to 5,000 pounds when you include all the bits that you need if I chuck yeah, in yeah. petrol and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, probably close. And that's just to get the exams done. And did you manage to do much flying during your ATPL period? No. So you, yeah. the swings and roundabouts, because what you're spending on doing the exams, you're not spending on, on the flying. Yes. It, I mean, I think I've flown four times in eight or nine months. Yeah. And, and a little bit is because you, you want to go flying, but you know it's probably going to be a whole day yeah, and you feel is. guilty because you're like, oh, I need to get on with revision. I, I, and you feel a bit guilty, like I'm, yeah. I'm just going off for a jolly rather than getting my head in the books and studying. It's, so It's funny, I know quite a lot of people like that and they come back after the 12 months or whatever and they're actually quite rusty then and they're like, oh my God, you know, I've spent all this time, I should have been flying and never feel guilty <laughs> for not flying, you know. But you can't balance everything, can you? That's the key. That's it. And I think I could have flown, but then the exams take longer. Yeah, exactly. And I just kind of wanted to get it done. Didn't get it so out of the way. It'll, yeah. I'm actually hopefully going out with James on Friday, yeah. uh, weather permitting. So that'll be interesting because it's been yeah. a while since I've been up, so... Oh, look forward to that then. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, thank you ever so much for coming on the podcast. And it's been great seeing your progress. And well done, by the way, for passing the ATPLs. Mm-hmm. It's really good to see. 
Um, so please don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, ding the bell for notifications for future episodes. And we hope uh, this episode's been useful to you. And we'll see you on the next one. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.